everyone, it's Jennifer and thank you so much for joining me. I am so excited to be working with the Color Trends Bead Mix in Parisian Blue. This is one of my favorites. This has got to be top two of my bead mixes from JJB. And uh, this is Sunday, March 26th. And when I looked on their website in the evening, um, this is evening time, and I did see that they still had some of the Parisian Blue Color Trends color trends bead mix in stock now you might not get your package like this as far as um with the card i know that they have started putting their bead mixes in let me grab one real quick in uh containers like these and so uh, they've been making the switch over, so I don't know if your package will show up like this or in the container. Regardless, it's an incredible bead mix. So something that I did find was when you hit search Parisian, Paris, and you type in Parisian Blue, or per, yeah, Parisian Blue, you will get three items. One item is sold out, or maybe four items. I know one item is sold out. I think there's some seed beads, some Toho seed beads. There's also this bead mix, but there's also a bundle of three enamel Vegas chains in three different colors to go with this. I did not see that before. This is one of my favorites, like I said, and I love the Vegas chain. So I'm going to be using that. Um, I've already opened up my package because I used, I think I used a couple of beads and I know I used a cage bead in another project. So I am just going to be using some beads um, that I have already. Um, I mean, I'm going to be using some of the leftovers and I'm also going to be using a clasp from the metal assortment. It's a metal clasp assortment mix. I'll put a link in the description. I've been working on this mix on this assortment for quite a while. There's I think 11 or 12 uh, different types. There's toggle clasps, there's brass, there's silver. I'm gonna be using a bright silver toggle clasp. You have lobster clasps and you have some magnetic clasps. Again, the mix includes more. I've been working on mine. Now, something you'll see what is, I have everything kind of already taken apart. The reason why was I already put my bracelet together once. I already did my earrings, put them together once, and did not like how the video turned out. It wasn't a very good quality. It was jumpy, and as far as the focus was going in and out, so I just wanted to give it a retake. But again, we're gonna be using some of the beads from the Parisian Blue. We're also gonna be using some chain reaction. This one is the 6460, and I've already got it pieced apart. I believe I probably got this in one of my design ambassador packages. I will also add a link in the description to the design ambassador program for Jesse James Beads. It's an amazing program. I've been involved now for, uh, I guess maybe over a year, and I really, really, really enjoy it. You get some either new products or older products to put together and showcase in videos and on social media. And this chain reaction did come in a pack. You'll see chain reaction also in Magical Mystery Bead Boxes. Magical Mystery Bead Box is the monthly subscription from Jesse James Beads. I will put a link to that in the description as well. I've been an annual subscriber for quite some time. And you'll also get some of those, um, some of these types of chains in the Magical Mystery Bead Box. Another place where you can get them are in Jesse James Beads workshops. And there's one coming up called Beads and Blooms. It's an incredible event. My dear friend Danielle Wicks will be uh, kicking that off with the first, uh, with the first session. And I believe it's three days, maybe four. I think it's three days. And uh, it's incredible. So I will put a link to that in the description as well. There's going to be other uh, presenters. Wendy Whitman will be there. Meredith Roddy will be there. And it's just going to be um, pretty incredible. So I'm going to go ahead and put these beads over to the side. Again, I have these gorgeous large whole ceramic beads that I want to use with some silver silk. And I have plenty left over. 
I did cut up the chain reaction and I'll show you how I cut, cut it up. I'll go ahead and take it off the jump ring. And how I cut it was, I was gonna make it just a single strand of the chain reaction, but since this is a little bulky, I wanted to balance it out with having a little bit bulky on the other side because it's gonna go like this, just like that. And what I did was I just staggered where the rondelle that comes on the chain, where that lands. And then I put them together using a large jump ring. I got these jump rings from my Beadalon variety pack, also available at Jesse James Beads. And I'll put a link to that in the description. So I did wire wrap and I did add my toggle. Like I said, I had it all put together and decided that the quality of the video was not where I wanted it to be. And uh, part of it was I had hit record, but didn't hit record. So that was part of the issue too. So that's gonna be the bracelet. We'll put the bracelet together after we put together these earrings. These earrings, I used one of these drop brios and rondelle and a bead cap and one of these gorgeous drop beads. And these are so pretty because if you look, it looks like a little, that it's a smoky blue and then you have kind of a smoky gray. So you can have two pairs of earrings in one just by twisting it around and it will naturally twist as well. What I'm gonna be using is some 20 gauge uh, soft flex craft wire, and this is in the silver. And yes, I don't have very much left, but I did order some from the, uh, from the sale that they had this weekend. I'm not sure if it's still going on, but it was 20% off their craft wire. And I'm gonna cut off a little bit more than, than I need. Uh, but I don't like to, I don't like to have a lot of waste. And so I'll show you what I do with working from the spool once we get to the bracelet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this drop bead and I am going to just pass that through, not very far, because I'm going to only use this tail to wrap around there. And this is going to be the post that we add our um, beads too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just form that over the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and form this second side over the top. And I want it to be able to move sort of. I don't want it to move too too much around in that wire because um, I kind of want it to just stay put. But you can make it as, as um, flowy as you want. I'm gonna go ahead and what I do is I put the tip of my chain nose pliers on the other end of this short end because then when I bend it, it's in the center. If I put it in the center and bend it, it's gonna be off by whatever your tip is. So there, see how it's right in the center? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna just go ahead and give it a little bit of a bend, just to give it a little bit of a start. And it's not completely straight out, and that's okay with me, because I'm gonna go ahead and put my chain nose pliers over that loop and just kind of form it a little bit. And this is dead soft, dead soft wire, so it's very easy to work with. You can also use this with German style wire. I have done that before where I've used German style wire, but I had this handy because I had it out because I was trying to see what other, um, what other um, spools I needed to get and take advantage of that sale. So now what I'm gonna do is come around and wrap a few times. And sometimes it gets moved around, just take your time with it. There's no rush. And I do let go after every half turn. Part of the reason why is because when I was just going around really quickly, I wasn't really paying attention. And I would get done doing the wrap, 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 and my, my wraps wouldn't look pretty or I would snap it. I've done that before where I've snapped like a head pin. Go ahead and come in and just tuck that in just a little bit. All right, so now we have this. We can clean things up a little bit if you don't like what it looks like. There we go. Just wanted that a little bit. All right, so now let's go ahead and string on the rondelle. 
one of the bead caps from the bead mix. All these beads are from the bead mix. I didn't pick anything from my stash except for the wire and the air wires. Now, since I'm using 20 gauge, I don't wanna go to the tippy tip. 20 gauge is uh, thicker than the 22. I will go to the tippy tip with the 22 gauge because I want it to be nice and tight. I don't want um, gaps in between where I finish my three wraps and where, um, where the bead starts. So I'm gonna go ahead and come in with my round nose pliers. My palm is facing me, so the barrels are going straight up and down. I'm just gonna take this and form it with my finger over the top, just like so. I'm gonna hold on to that, and then I'm just gonna rotate my wrist so now the barrels are side by side. And I'm gonna go ahead and push this to the back, and then I'm gonna center that up just as so. I'm gonna come in with the tip of my chain nose pliers, and the first thing I wanna do is just lock that first um, wrap, just kind of lock it into place, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start wrapping, and I'm gonna wrap three times around. Also, to be aware if you're working with um, a glass bead on the top, because you don't wanna cut it too close, um, and make the wraps too tight because then you have the uh, you run the risk of uh, breaking your glass bead and then just come in very carefully and tuck that in. Okay, then see how that's a little off to the side. Let's just go ahead and just plug that back in there and then just move it just a hair. And so I moved it just a hair. I'm gonna use some of these ear wires. Again, mine's already opened up because I had already made this earring. I got these ear wires on jessiejamesbeads.com and I will put a link to that as well, to these. All right, let's get it a little straight. All right, so here we go. We have our pair of earrings and I'll take pictures of these outside um, and post them as well so you can see them sparkle in the sun. Okay, now we're gonna get to our bracelet. Again, I've finished most of it. I did anyways. The only thing that I did that didn't get caught on camera when I did it the first time was attaching the toggles and this last wrap. So let's go ahead and get this last wrap. And I will explain why I put this end of the toggle on this side with these strands rather than over on this side. I don't think it would have been a big deal, um, but I'll just point out a little tip. This is what I had left over. You can do anything with these. You can make another bracelet, just a single strand using these links here and link them together with jump rings. You can, what I've done before is I've had a link like this and I would take this apart and I would head pin this and make a, a drop earring with that. So there's a lot that you can do with that. Since this matches really well with this mix, I'm gonna go ahead and toss it in with my leftover beads. Okay. Now the reason why I didn't do the coin, the, the wavy coins all the way around, there were four and four might've worked if I would have added maybe some more jump rings or jump rings in between that were a little bit larger because I just used five millimeter in between. But I only had six of these gorgeous rondelles left over in the mix, which I might've used them in another project because this was opened. I think I used some of the beads in another project. So um, I did three and it came out to be about half of the bracelet. I know with toggles, you don't want it to be too loose, but having the three took it about halfway around and I want it to be a little bit loose on me. And I don't have a problem losing bracelets that have toggles. So now what I'm gonna do is since I'm so far to the end of the bottom here, the end of my spool, I'm gonna show you how I work from the spool. I've showed you how I've done this with my lar with my long um, strands when I am pulling from my uh, large beetle on spool. 
but I'll show you what I do with the smaller spools too. Okay, and I'm gonna use one of these spacers, two of these spacers. These spacers are also included in the uh, bead mix. Everything I have here, beads-wise, was included in the mix. The chain reaction, you can get that at jessiejunesbeads.com, or you might have it in your stash from a mag Magical Mystery Bead Box. The toggles came in a mix, and uh, I will put a link to that. I didn't check before I started to see if those are still available, but they have plenty of toggles and different types of uh, findings on the website as well. So now I just go ahead and I just put that right onto my right onto my spool here. And I'm gonna come in with my chain nose pliers about an inch and a half down because it's not a very large hole, but I'm gonna make it a little bit larger than I do my, um, my ear wires. My ear wires are about a quarter of the way up. And then these were a little hair shy of a halfway. Now these are different uh, you might have different round nose pliers. I have a couple of pairs of round nose pliers and maybe four. I think I have four pairs of round nose pliers and not two are the same. But let's go ahead and go a little bit less than halfway. And I'm just gonna do exactly what I did before with the earrings. My palm is facing me and the barrels are straight up and down. I'm gonna form that over the top just gonna hold on to that and rotate it. And now my palm is facing down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and push that to the back. And that actually looks pretty centered. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with my chain nose pliers. And then, and it this works out well when it's not a full spool. When it's a full spool, it hangs down a little bit, but um, it's still workable. All right, so now let's go ahead and get that locked into place just like so. That first wrap is so important, just as the other two that I'm gonna be doing. Let's go ahead and come around this way. Sorry about that. I'm further away from my head than I normally am. <laughs> That's the joys of recording, but I love to record for everybody. It's so much fun. And I'm gonna go ahead and come in with my bent chain nose pliers so that I can get that tail tucked in. Okay, don't want the tail sticking out. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just eyeball how much I used. And I'm gonna come in about here, about an inch and a half. And I want my loop to go the same way. So here's, here's the front, there's where my tail end ended. So I'm gonna come in right there. Let's grab these. And again, I'm going to go a little bit away from the end because it is 20 gauge. I'm going to come in about a hair shy of halfway. Form that over the top, rotate, and push to the back. And then let's just make sure that it's centered. And it is centered now. Let's go ahead and Give that that lock-in turn, and then let's finish it off. And yes, I have a very small piece. I don't like waste. I'm big on waste, and I waste so much sometimes, depending on what I'm doing. This one here, I'm redoing it again. So, I mean, out of that, I didn't waste too much. And this is from the earrings. So not too much waste. All right. And I think part of the reason why I started working from the spool wasn't just because of waste. It was also because I had a hard time figuring out how much I was going to need, how much, um, how much uh, wire I was going to need. And so I thought, well, I'll just start working from the spool. And when I started doing that, I didn't have a lot of waste. And I thought, wow, this is kind of cool. So then I got in the habit of it. So out of the pair of earrings and one wrap, I didn't have too much waste there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up this jump ring and attach that. Again, this is like a five millimeter jump ring. I want my loops to go in the same direction. 
and get that nice and evened up. Okay, so there's half of the bracelet. Now here's the other half. And the reason why I decided to put these on this end, I could have very easily done it with this one too, but something to keep into consideration is when you're using a toggle, sometimes whatever is on that end has to come through the toggle a little bit. And you just wanna make sure that you don't have a big, you know, 12 millimeter bead right here because then you would never be able to get your toggle through. Another way around that is just to add some extra jump rings as well to give it a little bit of length to kind of thin it out. All right, so now I want them all to go in the same order as I had them here. And again, I just select, I just selected a, a length and just start going with it. I was gonna make it just single, but then again, like I said, I needed to kind of bulk it up a little bit. So let's go ahead and get these on there. And keep going and keep going. There we go. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and attach that there. And this was kind of a design on the fly for me, even though I'm not live, because that is totally not where I was going. And then as I started uh, cutting away and, and um, as I started cutting away, I thought, oh, I should just bulk it up. Because then, if just think if it was just single strand, it wouldn't flow very well, right? But now it has a very good flow, has a little bit of bulk on this side, and then those gorgeous beads. Again, I am using beads from the Parisian Blue Bead Mix from Jesse James Beads. This is one of their color trends. I will put a link to this one in the description, but take a peek at all the color trends. They have... Uh, on the website, if you um, are on a computer, even on your mobile phone or mobile device, you have uh, there's different categories, and they have different they have all of the color trends in a collection, and so you can look at all the color trends too. I have so many, I have so many color trends, and I love them. In fact. My next video is going to be using some of the beads and these tassels uh, from the Gun Metal Roses. And I can't wait to get working on those because I do have some other chain that I want to use with this Gun Metal. So again, these are absolutely amazing. If you like blue, snag the Parisian blue. If you like red, go and grab the red. And there's some other colorful mixes in the uh, collection. So give this video a huge thumbs up if you like it. Leave me a comment. I love to see what everybody has to say. I'm going to take some pictures of these and be sure to subscribe so you do not miss out on the next video. And until next time, have a good one.